Why is it that most guys train their chest for years and years and still never develop an upper chest? Today, I'm gonna share with you my top five reasons why your upper chest sucks so you can stop having a shitty upper chest and stop making mistakes literally every guy makes with their chest training. Now, it wasn't until Charles Glass called me out late last year for having literally no upper chest that I came to a realization on a few things I was doing wrong in my training and a few key exercises I wasn't prioritizing that actually developed the upper chest and no, it's not the bench press. The thing of it is, you're sitting across here but you have yeah. nothing there. Yeah. So, you never start okay. with something that you are you have already. You want to go with what you don't have first. Right. Number one reason why your chest sucks, you are not doing the guillotine press. Now, there is a study where they went inside the chest muscles through an EMG activation study and they declared that the guillotine bench press worked more upper pec than a traditional bench press. But I was surprised to find that a guillotine press with 225 pounds worked more pec, and specifically your upper chest, than an inclined bench press with even 275 pounds. Now, if your upper chest sucks, take this a step further and try the incline guillotine bench press. Now, I learned this move from Charles Glass, and it will blow up your upper chest when you do it properly. Now, at first glance, it's going to look like a traditional barbell incline bench press, but it is not. Now, the big difference is that you are dropping the bar right above your neck, almost dropping it to the height of your chin. Your elbows are going to flare out slightly more than a traditional bench press move. Now, you wanna go 10 to 12 rep range on this with very short rest times. Focus on pumping blood into the upper chest. Now, it's so much more important when you're trying to target your upper chest to focus on form rather than ego lifting. This is not a move that you wanna ego lift on. This is a specific mass building move that's gonna target those upper pecs if you do it correctly. Now, I recommend that you actually learn this move on the Smith machine so you can really keep that upper chest muscle under constant time under tension and control the eccentric portion of the rep too. When I did this move with Charles Glass, we actually set up the incline bench at a pretty steep incline and it was actually slightly more than about 45 degrees, but do what works for you, and when you do this move properly, you will feel it so much in your upper chest. As you're about to see, the guillotine press is scientifically proven to be one of the most superior chest activators out of any exercise, far more than even the traditional bench press, but you will hardly see anybody do it at the gym. And that's because, number one, they're too busy ego lifting on the bench press, which brings me to reason number two why your upper chest sucks. You are flat benching way too much. Every guy has his own theory about which exercises are the best and which exercises suck. And we all think we know the best movements to grow our muscles. But do we really? Because Athlean just made an entire video called the only three chest exercises you need and did not even include the exercises that are scientifically superior. Now, who do you listen to these days if you could not trust a guy with over 10 million subscribers. I like to think me, of course, but you know, all kidding aside, there's a study and this guy named Brett Contreras took us inside our chest muscles using EMG activation technology, which is a tool that measures how muscle activity is going on with every moment that you do. So based on this experiment, here are the top three exercises in terms of mean and peak activation for the upper chest. The mid pulley crossover, the dumbbell incline bench press, and the guillotine press. Now, notice what's not on it. The barbell bench press and the barbell incline bench press is not even on it. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to stop bench pressing. It's the chest move that allows you to move the most weight, and it's going to build your pecs. I'm personally trying to increase my bench press right now. The thing that you have to understand is the flat bench press is going to predominantly work the mid and lower pecs, not the clavicular head, aka your upper chest. So all we can do is go off the latest science and activation studies, and most importantly, listen to your own body on what you feel the most. If you feel a great pump in your upper chest following an exercise, which I guarantee you, you are not feeling after bench pressing, chances are that it's a very effective exercise. Now we just covered the guillotine incline press, and you see it on this activation study as well. What's important is that you are working the upper pec through multiple ranges of motion, pushing or pressing like you would on the guillotine press and on the dumbbell incline press. The top two upper chest exercises on the activation study in terms of peak activation, but also adducting, which is bringing your arms towards the center plane of your body. This is so important. Now, 
Me personally, my favorite upper chest exercises are ones that involve adducting. Now you see the mid pulley crossover on this list, but in my opinion, the Wolverine low to high cable fly is way more effective for me personally. Now you're probably wondering, but Troy, it's not on the activation list. It says mid pulley crossover. Brett only tested 10 to 15 total exercises in this study and the low to high cable crossover was not one of them. But if you look at the direction of the muscle fibers, you're going to know one thing. And you're gonna know that the upper chest fibers run low to high. And if you perform any cable fly move going low to high, you're going to better isolate the upper pecs. Now, another one for me personally, is the dumbbell incline fly and dumbbell incline pinch press. And you can even superset these for a crazy upper chest pump. Now, what you do is you set the bench at a 45 degree angle and you get a full stretch on the flies and squeezing those dumbbells together and pinch pressing up also really focuses on that upper chest. Simply add in five to 10 sets per week of these upper chest isolators and most importantly, train hard with them. Go until failure or near failure and really focus on your mind muscle connection to feel these exercises. Number three reason your upper chest sucks, you are not doing the Charles Glass special push-ups. Now, I made an entire push-up workout challenge around these. I love them so much. And if you're trying to build your upper chest and you're only doing regular push-ups, you are barely getting any activation in those upper pecs. It's pretty much all anterior deltoid and mid chest. Now, my favorite body weight exercise to bring on my upper pecs is something called a frog push-up, AKA the Charles glass push-ups. What you're gonna do here is think of your feet flat against the wall. Now you're gonna walk out with your hands and very important, you wanna keep your hands inside shoulder width apart. This is gonna put more overload right on those triceps and really make it challenging. It's gonna make it a very challenging push exercise. Now, the key with this movement is you're gonna be angled down. So think about your upper chest angled down towards the ground. My feet are against the wall. My hands are inside shoulder width apart. I'm gonna scoot my hands in just like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down, point my upper chest to the ground, and as I push up, I'm not pushing up right here. I'm pushing up back. So see the difference? Right here versus going back. So do this push-up if you wanna hop on the challenge, try just one set until failure every single day. I guarantee you, you're gonna blow up that upper chest if you add this to your daily routine. It's low impact, it's a fun challenge. Just try it if you're serious about building that stubborn upper chest. Now, the number four reason that your upper chest sucks is you are not lean enough. Now, my upper chest shows the most when, guess what, I am lean. When I'm 10 to 12% body fat, my upper chest pops way more than when I'm 16 to 18% body fat. And no matter how much you develop your upper chest, it's not going to look very good unless you are lean. It's just one of those muscle groups that's not going to stand out much until you get really lean. Now, you don't need to be competition shredded or some unrealistic body fat percentage, but staying at 12% body fat year round really is not that hard to do once you get that lean in the first place. So step one is simply choose better exercise selection and build your upper chest. And then once you do that, make sure that you are lean enough to judge your results. You might have a great upper chest being covered up by an ugly layer of fat. The number five reason your upper chest sucks is your volume, training intensity, and nutrition sucks. Now, yes, I know that's technically three reasons, but it's my video and we don't need to spend much time on any of these. Training volume, so important. You need to place at least 10 to 20 intense working sets directly on your upper chest every single week if you want it to grow. This is non-negotiable. Now, it's one thing to do these sets and hit this magical volume number and go through the motions, and it's another thing to actually train hard. If you train early in the morning like me, and you sometimes just don't have the energy to go hard, then guess what? Simply take a pre-workout like I did this morning because I was exhausted. I take superhuman pre-workout from my company Outline, and it hits me hard with crash-free energy. It gives me an epic pump. It's gonna increase my muscular endurance and it's clinically dosed with ingredients that are proven to work. It's gonna help you as much as a pre-workout can possibly help you. But guess what? The gains happen in recovery and with your nutrition. You need to be eating around maintenance or in a tiny surplus if you are a hard gainer and getting in at least one gram of high quality protein every single day. 
This is why I take superhuman protein post-workout and also once in a while as a snack. Now, it's an easy and delicious way to get in a very high quality and easy to digest form of protein. Now, no matter what protein you take, make sure it's a whey protein isolate as this has the highest concentration of number one amino acid and number two has that lactose stripped for better digestion. Now, if you wanna try Superhuman Pre-Workout and Superhuman Protein from my company, Elfline, simply go to elfline.com and use the code TROY20. Now, it's not going to do the work for you, but the combination of the Superhuman Pre-Workout and Protein will help you train harder. It's gonna help you get a better pump. It's gonna help you get your daily protein intake in easier, and it's gonna help you recover quicker. And it's what I personally take almost every single day for faster results. All right, fam, so thanks for watching. Smash a like for the YouTube algorithm so I can afford to keep on buying my cats that delicious wild-caught organic salmon they enjoy. And please comment below what video that you wanna see next in this series. Option number one, why your legs suck. Option number two, why your arms suck. And I also randomly select comments within the first 24 hours of uploading to win exciting prizes. So comment anything down below, ask me a question. I simply love hearing from you guys in the comment section. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you missed the mass building workout videos that I uploaded last week with Charles Glass, the godfather of bodybuilding, you are missing out on all kinds of gains. I'm gonna link them over here, also in the end cards over here. And I will see you on the next video. You ain't got no games. You ain't lift no weights. <laughs>